2023 Mr. Olympia is in the books and so much to talk about. This was so exciting. I was literally on the edge of my couch and I'm going to tell you what I did. I didn't buy the live stream. I watched RX Muscle Live because I'm not spending $75 and I was still on the edge of my couch. <laughs> anyway, first of all, congratulations, Derek Lunsford. New 2023 Mr. Olympia. First and possibly the only one to ever do it in the future as well. 212 Mr. Olympia, open Mr. Olympia. That's impressive right off the bat, but congratulations to him. This was so close. This was so close. It was a toss up. You could have given it to any of the top three Samson, Hardy, or Derek. I was just listening to King Kamali. He was on live on Instagram. And he said that he spoke to a judge that was on the panel and he didn't uh, say any names. And he said that it was so close that they still didn't have their mind made up during the pose down, that it was the pose down. It came down to the pose down that finally made the decision. That's how close it was. Razor, razor, razor thin. Now I'm going to toot my own horn a little bit, okay? I don't know if you guys watched Muscle Talk with me and uh, Jason Owens and uh, Stanimal and Jose Raymond, and even the one before that, I, I went through a uh, uh, top 10. Um, you take Obviously, I did the top 10 before Nick came out, but I literally had, you pull Nick out and everybody else just moved up that I said just moved up one spot. So I'm tooting my own horn. I had Derek winning. I had Hardy in second. I had Samson in the third. I had Brandon in fourth. Obviously, I had Nick in fourth and Brandon in fifth, but you take Nick out. He moves up fourth. I had um, Andrew Jackson in sixth. You take Nick out. He moves up to fifth. I mean, I'm pretty good. Anyway, that being said, this was so exciting, and they gave it to Hardy. Let's, let's take a look at some pictures, and then we'll obviously talk about – I mean, they, this was so close. I apologize. They gave it to Derek. This is how excited I am. I get the, I'm getting the names mixed up. This was so close. They gave it to Derek. Did he deserve it? Well, so you could have gave it to any one of the top three. And Derek's back was insane by far. Clearly the best of the three. Highest conditioning was the best of the three. And Samson was the most complete out of the three. You could have gave it to any one of them, and I would have been like, all right. Let's, it would have been like no argument from me. Let's look at some pictures, and then we'll talk about Hadi and his lack of sportsmanship, because I know that's what everybody wants to talk about. Let, well, well, let's let's check out a little bit uh, of some pictures. Let's see what's happening here. Here we go. Okay. Let's First of all, let's do this. Maybe let's do that. All right. So I love – you know I love this guy's page, Fernando Arroyo, Fernando, his page, because he always has – Great. I mean, uh, I mean, uh, Derek just look. I Derek looked amazing, but so did Samson and Hardy. I, 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 I'm, I'm at a loss for words here. This was, this was one of the most amazing Mister Olympia. I think this was the great, greatest Mister Olympia I've ever watched in my life. I don't ever remember another Mister Olympia being this close ever, 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 ever. This was absolutely phenomenal. Okay, let's see. What do we got here? Let's see. This is when they... All right, so let's look at some picks, and then we'll see what's happening here. And, and Derek also won uh, the People's Champion. So we had a, Derek had a great night. This is probably the greatest night of Derek's life. Mr. Olympia and the People's Champion. So he's going to be a, a great ambassador for the sport. If anybody follows my channel, I said if it was going to be close... We might give it to Derek just because they know he's going to be a great ambassador for the sport. Okay. But anyway. All right. Let's see. Here we go. All right. This front double bicep. I mean, who do you give it to? Who do you give this front double bicep to? Samson's X frame is phenomenal. Honey, I mean, I would not want to be a judge in this panel. Who do you give it to? I mean, this is pretty much even. 
Yeah. You know, all right. Uh, uh, maybe I'll give this to Hadi. But by by an by a by a by a you know what hair, all right? And the blue collar field is to see you next Tuesday hair. That's what we say. Front lad spread. Who do you give this to? I can't make I I can't make up my mind looking at these three. I, I don't know. I have no idea. I mean, I'm looking at all three of them now, and I'm like, who do I pick for a front lad spread? They're all amazing. They're all amazing. Okay, here's the next one. Side chest. Here's another one. You know, I might give this. Uh, yeah, okay. I mean, uh, right off the bat, you go to Hardy for the side chest, but you also got to take into consideration their legs and glutes. And then, and then, Samson from the side, his legs are insane. So it's like Hardy wins the top, Samson wins the bottom, right? And the only, I mean, I mean, look, Derek has doesn't have the striations and the uh, muscle fibers in the chest and delts like a hottie, but hottie doesn't have the back. And that's saying something, but hottie doesn't have the back of Derek. And that is like an insane comment because hottie's back is unbelievable. And Derek's is a, 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 a smidgen better. Right? I mean, did this, you got to give this one to Derek. This is the only pose I saw so far that we went through together that I say, okay, this one's Derek's. Right? Because he steals, he steals the back poses. And I kind of think this is why they gave it to him because his, the back poses were, 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 his back poses are amazing. His, his back is phenomenal. It is just, and here's the thing. Here's the other thing. All three of them kept getting better and better and better as the show went on. Nobody faded. They kept getting better. They kept getting harder. They kept. They did not fade. Nobody faded. This top three was might be the greatest top three in bodybuilding history. This was absolutely phenomenal, Mister Olympia. All right, lat spread again. You give it to Derek, but look, look at fucking Hottie's back. Saying Derek has a better back than Hottie, which is true, is is in, is, is an incredible. Statement because Hardy's back is phenomenal, but Derek's is that much better, but by a hair. And 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 saying that to, about Samson, because Samson's weak pose compared to these two guys is his rear double by, not his lat spread. Samson has a phenomenal lat spread, but these two guys are are a little bit better. Side tricep. Side tricep, I would give to Javi because his abs, shoulders, and chest, it's just the striations in his shoulders and abs, and he's got that density. But, you know, it, I mean, this is a bad shot for, for Samson. But if you if you watched it, Samson, this was, I mean, I'm giving it to Javi, but this, I, I'm, I'm, I'm giving it to Javi by, by, by an inch. Again, I give it to Javi by an inch. I, I, I don't know. I might give this one to Samson because his his midsection is insane. Now Hadi knows he has great oblique, so he, he so he you know turns to the side. Um, but this one too, okay, I'll give it to Hadi. Okay, and I, I I don't know, I honestly don't know. I want to give this one to Samson. His most muscular, Samson's most muscular is phenomenal because he's he's so much he's a bigger person. He's wider, and Hadi's most muscular is see Derek loses this shot. To both of these guys because he lacks the striations in his chest and shoulders that Hadi and Samson have. I guess I would give this to Samson because he's just so much more compact and the striations and, and the shoulders. But 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 no, I'm 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 changing my mind literally as we talk about this. But Samson's most muscular is phenomenal because he's so much wider. And his legs, his 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 quad sweep. Like literally starts right after his knee. It's unbelievable where Derek's quad sweep starts a little bit higher than that, right? It's just you literally got it. You're cutting hairs to see who's winning this. It's un unbelievable. All right, all right. Now that we figured out that, I don't know. 
uh, that this was the most competitive Mr. Olympia ever. Probably the most exciting one ever. Um, Andrew Jack has to put on some more weight. He has a beautiful physique. But this is what we said when he when he won, I, I believe it was a Tampa text. I don't remember. This is this is what we said about Andrew Jack. Andrew Jack needs to put on five, 10 pounds, and he will be in the mix. But he's he's got he's got to bring that conditioning as well. And I believe that I know I know Arns disagrees with me. And as he should, because he's a he was a top level bodybuilder. But I believe that if he puts more size on his hamstrings, his lower body, and his upper body, if he just puts more size on completely, that muscle will push through the skin deeper. Because I don't think he's doing any he's got Chris Aceto as a coach. Chris Aceto is not going to coach somebody who's not putting in the work. Okay. He's not going to be like, he's not going to, he's not going to coach a guy who's half assing it. It's just not going to do. So I, I know, I know Andrew's doing the work. And I just think that it's he, if he puts a little bit more muscle on, the muscle will push to the skin closer and you'll be able to see more separation striations in his glutes, hamstrings, lower back. That's my opinion. I don't know. But he has to put he, if he puts another ten pounds of muscle on that frame because he's got a huge frame, then he's in the mix with Samson, Hadi, and and Derek. Hunter, I think this is as good as Hunter's going to get. My opinion, okay. Brandon, um, you got to give Brandon his just due because he came in fourth and he was in the hospital <laughs> two nights ago. And the reason why he was in the hospital, the reason why he was coughing up blood, he has ulcers apparently. So you got to give him his just due that he came back from the hospital and he plays fourth in one of the greatest lineups in Mr. Olympia history. All right. Obviously, we're going we're, we're gonna, to we're gonna, we're gonna stop at the top five. Now, okay. Hani Shia showed really poor sportsmanship. Really, really poor sportsmanship. Let's see when they announced... Derek is the winner. I didn't see Hadi's. Um, I didn't see Hadi's uh, reaction when he announced Derek as the winner. But just looking at their body chemistry here, uh, Derek seemed to know he won. Like, yeah, he was that confident, even though he's see, uh, and uh, because he was standing there, and yeah, Hadi has that slow clap. He was really pissed off. Um. Oh, uh, right, he did. Okay. All right. All right. He's all right. He did congratulate him, and he did hug him. Okay. It's not as bad as I thought, but during the medal ceremony, this part, you have all the guys on stage, and Hottie just couldn't control his emotions, and he fucking left. And you see Brandon and the rest of the guys looking. You know, and that's got to be uncomfortable for Derek because Derek and Hadi are both trained by uh, Hani. And that's got to be uncomfortable for him because they probably have trained together. They probably spent some time together during this Olympia because they're the same trainer. You know, but uh, that, that was not a good showing from Hadi. Especially what's happening in the Middle East right now. Uh, that was that was that was poor sportsmanship. You know, you got to hold it together, man. You're not going to win every time. You know, I get, I understand you get used to winning because Hardy's been winning since since he's a two twelve guy. But um, that was poor sportsmanship. A couple of shout outs, a couple of a uh, couple of things I want to say for my personal my personal opinion, and these are all good things. First thing is. Um, I watched the RX muscle, and as soon as Hadi lost, and I think King King Kamali probably knew what he was going to do if Hadi lost. He uh, he had Amin Ali and another Iranian podcaster on. I forgot his name, and then it was Lee Priest. And he apologized to Lee Priest, and he spoke as in his Iranian language. I don't know what the language is called. He spoke into his Iranian language, and he basically told the people in Iran. Uh, because bodybuilding is huge in Iran, and Hadi is like an A-list celebrity over there. They basically said, he basically told them that, you know, control yourself, don't freak out, 
don't don't go nuts in so many words you know um these things happen control yourself control your emotions um have sportsmanship Congr- congratulate Derek Lunsford, which I thought was really really classy for King Kamali to do because especially what's going on in the Middle East right now because you know there were a lot of comments then then King went on live right after on his Instagram which I had just was watching and there's a lot of comments underneath from some Iranian people they gave it to uh, Derek because Hadi's Muslim and what's going on in the Middle East and that's just not true that's just not true okay um they they don't the Olympia is never tied to politics. And that's one of the reasons why I love the Olympia. Because it's never tied to politics. It is never tied to race. It is never tied to religion. We always, bodybuilding has always left that shit at the door. That shit stays at the door. Race, religion, politics always stayed at the door. Yeah, uh, You know, uh, even um, sexual preference. You're gay. That stays, shit stays at the door. You know, that's it. And that's one of the reasons why I was always very proud of the sport that I was passionate about because all that shit never mattered. It always was left behind. And then bodybuilding was first. So that was a really classy move from King Kamali. And King and I have a, somewhat of a friendship. I, I know him pretty well. He knows me pretty well. He's been on my show. And I hold that man in great respect, tremendous respect. And he did a hell of a job on RX Muscle. He, he really did. He did a hell of a job. He was getting me excited. I was watching it with my wife. I was getting excited. The other, the other couple of guys that I want to mention is uh, Samson. Um, Samson Dowda was the first elite bodybuilder that ever came on my my podcast. And I was only had my podcast three years ago for a couple of three and a half years ago, whatever it is, for a couple of months. And I asked him to come on. And this was during COVID. And he had that terrible time. And, and I believe it was in... Korea, he had a show and he was locked in the hotel room and he's, yeah, I'll come on, no problem. And he came on and uh, I was so excited because I was a hardcore fan and Samson was just starting out as a pro. I don't think he was a pro a year yet or maybe he was a pro one year and uh, we kept in touch ever since and I admire that man so much. I, I admire him because of his character of coming on the show and if I message him on Instagram, he messages me right back. He came on two more times since then. Uh, and he came on right after his Arnold Classic win. And I just admire him and I'm proud of him. But I admire him more, more than anything else. Uh, because The reason why I don't like I say I'm proud, because that sounds like you're a father figure. And I, 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 it's beyond proud. I admire him. I admire his work ethic. I admire the fact that he's humble about it too. The great strides he made in his career has not gone to his head. He's very humble. He still comes on my show. I'm no RX Muscle. I'm no Fuad Abiyad, right? I'm not Dennis James. I'm this kid from Brooklyn who's now grown up living in Jersey and decided to do a podcast. And he was like, yeah, no problem, man. And he never forgot me and, and, I'm just grateful. So I'm very, I admire him so much. And I'm so happy that he came in third place. A couple other guys, uh, Charles Griffin. I believe he broke the top 10. Uh, extremely proud. And I admire that man too, because of his work, work ethic. Cause he came on my show too. When I was just starting out and he, when I was on muscle development, he was the first guest I had on. I asked him and he said, no problem. And uh, I'll be there. And he was there. And I admire his work ethic. The other guy, Phil Clayhar, has become a friend. This man is 49 years old. He has become a tremendous IFBB professional bodybuilder, winning a pro show. He's the oldest guy ever to win an open show in the IFBB. And went on to do the Olympia Uh He's the only guy I admire greatly. He has the work ethic, and he has he has the work ethic of a champion, but he also has, how can I say this? Phil Klahar has the character of a tremendous, Phil Klahar has the character I can only hope to have of a human being. That's the best way I could put it. And he has an amazing wife in his corner. And let me tell you something. If there's any young guys out there, if you've noticed the guys that's that rise to the top in any, we're going to use bodybuilding. 
as a as a an example. But any endeavor in life, the guys that have that rise to the top, they have the wives that are right behind them, cheering them on and helping them. They don't have the wives that are more worried about their lips and their butts and their breast implants. They have the wives that are helping them all the way. They have the wives that are complementing their life so they could be champions like Phil, like Sean Clarita, like Samson, like Derek. Part of the reason why these guys are so great is because they chose women that were great and were going to be blessings to their life and not a problem to their life. And those girls are few and far between. So guys like Phil, Samson, Derek, uh, even Charles. Charles has a fantastic wife. Sean, Sean Clarita. You, you guys don't know what it's like. I'm sure some of you do. But when you have a drive like these guys, and you have work ethic like these guys, and you meet a woman that is, that is more of a blessing than a headache, it makes that drive even greater. Because the fact that she's there by your side helping you, even the small stuff, making your coffee in the morning when you're on your way, you're running late, she irons your shirt for you. She's meal prepping for you. Well, it sounds simple, right? No. No, there's not too many girls like that out there. But it makes your drive even greater because now you have somebody that you truly love and are responsible for and want to give the world to because she's giving the world to you. So just look at these guys and learn from the fact the one thing that they have in common is the women in their corner. Anyway, that's just what I needed to say. This was the greatest Mr. Olympia ever watched. This was fantastic. I can't wait for Muscle Talk. I can't wait for Anabolic Academy when I get to uh, watch the uh, answer the questions, break this down with, with Arns on Wednesday. It's going to be great. All right, guys. 2023 is in the books. Derek Lunch with you, Mr. Olympia. Like, subscribe, share, hit that notification button. I'm John Levy. This is Serious and Silliness Bodybuilding. Peace.